Today, we're speaking with Dr. Richard Bowles, and we're talking about autism. Now, you may have patients and they're diagnosed with autism, and there may be a group of you that says, okay, that's it, you know, move on to ABA therapy. There's really nothing else to do. There may be a group of you that feels like there might be something to do. But what we want to talk about today is the impact of mitochondrial dysfunction with autism. So Dr. Bowles, can you first walk us through how mitochondrial dysfunction may play a part in autism? Well, people have been using mitochondrial therapies in autism for decades. I've been doing it for three decades now. And anecdotally, the results have been highly positive in most cases. It's been more recent that the data has been showing that there is data from several physicians, particularly Dr. Richard Fry, that has shown that most patients with autism have a degree of mitochondrial dysfunction. There's often complex one deficiency, but there's other disorders as well. And I've seen that in my own patients, that mitochondrial dysfunction is present in the vast majority, perhaps all patients with autism. And can mitochondrial dysfunction be treated? Oh, yes. Mitochondrial dysfunction can be treated. They're, the mitochondria require nutrients, um, micronutrients, particularly vitamins, minerals, cofactors, um, and antioxidants for their therapy. In addition to that, mitochondria that are not working very well produce a lot of free radicals, organic acids, and other toxins. It's sort of analogous to an automobile. If the automobile is running at peak efficiency, it's not going to produce a lot of uh, pollution. But if that automobile is driving on a freeway, going uphill, pulling a trailer, it's requiring a lot of energy, and you're going to see a significant amount of smoke coming from that vehicle. What smoke is, is half-burned gasoline. Well, our mitochondria burn fats for a lot of the energy, and half-burned fats are many of the problems that we see, the organic acids in patients with mitochondrial dysfunction. We also see half-burned carbohydrates, such as lactate, lactic acid, and we see free radicals, which are very important in damaging cells, um, membranes, proteins, as well as DNA. So antioxidants are critically important for treatment of mitochondria dysfunction to try to remove these toxins and to mitigate their damage. So a patient that uh, has autism, um, they're being treated by a physician watching, watching this webinar. What does that physician do about this now that they, they may have this idea, okay, that makes sense that mitochondrial dysfunction may play a role. What do I do now? Well, for decades, the only thing that you could do was to direct your patients to go to the vitamin store and to buy a large number of different cofactors and other micronutrients for as part of the mitochondrial cocktail. So we started with carnitine, coenzyme Q10, and riboflavin, vitamin B2. And that actually was rather successful. Later, we added vitamin C, alpha lipoic acid, magnesium. But there's many other components of good mitochondrial health. And many of my patients were on 10, 20, even as many as 30 different supplements. And that just became unwieldy. So combination products are important to reduce the costs and difficulty in buying multiple products and also to reduce all of the fillers. And if you ever tried giving 20 different products to a kid with autism, you would know that combination products are needed. Dr. Adams did a study on a combination product that had approximately 30 different active ingredients in it and showed that it was tremendously helpful in autism in a double blind study. That formula had significant mitochondrial support, but it was not at the level that many of my patients were seeing benefit from. So I helped spearhead the design with Dr. Fry and many others of a formula called Spectrum Needs in powder form that includes this, all the vitamins and minerals that was in Dr. Adams' formula, as well as many additionals for, a, for better mitochondrial support. Spectrum Needs has been very helpful in my patients on the autistic spectrum, as well as other neurodevelopmental patients. Many um, older teenagers and adults do not like to take powder. It's not convenient for them, or they just don't like the taste. So we have an energy needs, which is 40 different active ingredients in a capsule form. So you, you use the word helpful. 
define that. What does that look like from a provider interacting with a patient pre and post? With 33 or 40 different active ingredients that do different things, the effects are going to be different. And each individual has different underlying genetics as well as different problems. But some of the very common um, improvements are in terms of reduction in, um, in pain, fatigue, nausea, dysautonomia, and other somatic symptomatology of mitochondrial dysfunction. And while those are not the core parts of autism, many times behavior is improved when you address that um, somatic, that functional component, and they're no longer in distress. Many of the patients that become verbal are more verbal as well. Wow. Um, behavior can improve in other ways. Um, in particular, ADHD-related behaviors can improve in many patients. The results in every single patient is different as an individual, but in general, some of the core symptoms of autism and the functional symptomatology are, can often be improved. That makes sense. Um, I want to kind of point out to the audience that if you are uh, treating patients and there's a chance that this may have a beneficial outcome, do you think the parents of the children you are treating would have interest in you at least trying it? So Dr. Bowles, is there a reason not to try something like spectrum needs for two months on a patient that's uh, been diagnosed with autism? Not really. The um, Many patients improve. It does take a couple of months, one to three months, to really see good benefits, um, although some benefit quicker. And you can see continued benefits up to six months or even a year. But side effects are extremely small and far between. And I've never seen a patient that has had irreversible or significant side effects. Um, the most common side effects is with any dietary supplement is nausea. So I recommend starting low, going slow, and at least at first taking it with a meal. Some patients are a little over-energized um, and this is often a benefit because kids with autism can get into more trouble when they have more energy and they're more alert. If that's really not the case, um, there are things that can be done, natural supplements that can balance in the other direction. You can reduce the, the amount or just simply not take it at bedtime, but take it earlier in the day as a second dose. What kind of things have you heard from parents? What's the anecdotal uh, surprise that you have heard? Most of the families have said that their children are better on this. And what I mean by children is they're from small children, even infants up to adults and everything in between. There are some that haven't improved. There are many that have improved dramatically and some that have started to talk that weren't speaking before. There are some that can now go to a restaurant and otherwise engage more in life because they have less anxiety or less behavioral problems. So the effects are very different, but there are mostly beneficial, never are they a pr problematic, at least after stopping it. Um, and that's rare that there's any side effects and often that's dramatically improved. What I would suggest is I think there is one of two actions for someone to take right now. There's a group of people who are ready. They, they have a patient in mind. They're thinking to themselves, why not just try it? For that person, they can go, they can order the product, they can guide the patient to order the product, and you can just take action today. Um, there may be some people who are watching this webinar that they feel like they need a little bit more information, and you can actually just book a direct call with Dr. Bowles and have a, a very specific conversation. Um, I think that would be a great next step. Dr. Bowles, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome.